Wisdom Financial Podcast, YouTube, wherever this is going, Facebook, um, I don't know, Twitter, Live, LinkedIn, uh, all of the things. Uh, I feel like you have to be everywhere, all the places, all the time. Um, so I'm, we're trying. We're, we're trying to be there for everything. Uh, so today uh, I'm excited because, you know, I, I've been doing this uh, infinite banking thing, banking yourself for a while and finding other people who are um, passionate about it and um, love it besides, you know, my wife and, and um, you know, uh, some of the advisors, of course, that we work with. Most of them actually are older. Most of them are, um, you know, uh, uh, you know, about 10, 15 years older than me on average, um, not uh, younger than me, uh, for the most part, besides, you know, of course, my amazing wife. Uh, but uh, so today I get to interview Hannah Kessler. I met her at a, uh, a real estate event here in Cincinnati, uh, and I've been listening to her podcast uh, for a while. Uh, now, what, why I have her on the, the call is she's a second generation person to the infinite bank concept, meaning her dad has been doing it and she has been learning a lot from him and in general in, in the world of uh, infinite banking. Um, the method, this is a method Hannah and her uh, father travel around the country to teach, right? This infinite banking concept and how to recycle, recapture and keep total control of your hard earned dollars. Uh, she helps alongside other people with the money multiplier. Uh, so uh, it, you're going to love uh, have listening to her and um, seeing her like, I don't know, um, vitality, youngness, something. I don't know. There's just a different way that a older, you know, guy, her, her dad, 50s, is going to speak differently than somebody who's younger. So anyway, uh, Hannah and I are going to talk about how to teach your kids about infinite banking. Uh, and the reason I love that is because your kids don't have to be four-year-olds like mine to be teaching them. They might be 40-year-olds. You never know. So uh, Hannah, thanks for joining us today. Oh, thanks, Brandon. Thanks for having me today. Oh, I'm, I'm glad you're here. It was really fun to have you or see you um, in Cincinnati, finding people who are, you know, uh, passionate about the same things. You know, you've I've listened to your podcast um, and, you know, you're really knowledgeable about this stuff, especially for somebody um, so young. Right. I, I feel like a Uh, but to, to understand the concept and be teaching the concept is a huge, huge thing. So how did you get involved? This is a friend of mine. He says, hey, Brandon. So uh, we do got people watching. So, Oh, good. Yeah, how, did you get, <laughs> how did you get involved in, in this whole thing? And, and I know you tell us a little bit of your story. Uh, and I want to talk about today. Um, how to teach your kids about infinite banking, uh, you being one of those kids, how are you taught, right? Uh, that's what I want to know. Uh, so much so that you're actually teaching others now. Yeah, yeah. Well, I actually, so Pops will always say this one thing. This is how he got us around it. He, he would gather us all up and he'd say, all right, kids, we're getting in the car. We're going to go get some ice cream. And so he'd get us all in the car. And then uh, when we're driving down the street, he'll lock the doors. And then that's when he'll start talking about infinite banking because yeah, us kids aren't going to roll out of the car of a moving vehicle, right? Yeah, <laughs> no, right. I'm just kidding. But, but really, how, how he really got us around it. And I'll just be real with you. 
I was not into this on the start of it. I actually had to go out there, fall flat on my face to really understand what it takes to really build yourself in our society that we live in here in America. And so, and so truthfully, I really didn't start getting into it until I moved out. I was uh, 17 years old. I was a waitress at Cracker Barrel at the time. I was living on my own, paying all of my own bills and, and it was hard, right? I mean, it is hard to make it a living out here working for mm -hmm. yourself, especially being young. And so that's when I started to really listen to dad and mom. And I was thinking to myself, all right, that they probably know something. So that's really when I started getting actively involved in this concept and around the a concept of just money and how money operates itself. And, and that's when I got involved. Um, but truthfully, though, I, I've always had a very hard work ethic. It wasn't hard for me to go out, find jobs or to get myself out of bed to go to work and stuff. So, so I do have a good understanding of a work ethic and going out there. But really, knowledge is nothing without the implementation of it, in my opinion. And so I was lacking wow. the implementation of this knowledge that mom and pops were sharing to me. Because I, at that time, you know, as a teenager, 17 years old, I think I, I know everything there is to know in this whole wide world, right? So 17, 17 is when I got involved. And then I got licensed on my 19th birthday to go start teaching this stuff. And dad, actually, he introduced me. I started off on the application team. And then from there, I built up. I was his assistant to now where I'm out there teaching other folks. So, so he was doing the job going out there, probably speaking. Um, and what I hear is uh, you were... Uh, you know, like all of us, you know, we wanted to be rebels and you, you probably said, dad doesn't know anything. Um, he doesn't, doesn't know what he's talking about uh, until like age 17. And then you're like, wait, he actually does uh, know a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. And, and he's pretty wise. And how did you shift between this whole thing of dad doesn't know uh, crap, right? Kind of idea. This is what happens as a teenager, right? If you guys have teenagers, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, if you have four year olds, maybe you know what I'm talking about. Um, mm -hmm. To now, you're you're you've been doing this for five years now, right? Somewhere in there. Mm -hmm. If you started at 17 and you're maybe six, um, so so you now have been. That, that whole thing of going into Cracker Barrel, working, realizing this whole thing. What changed in you that, that now you're like, man, I wish I would have done this earlier. Or what would you have done differently? What would you have said to dad? I wish you would have done this differently for me. Yeah, honestly, I, I think I think anybody can relate to this. Um, actually, one of our members who, who uh, he, he practices infinite banking with us, he actually told me this quote, and it makes so much sense now. You will not if, if you are a prof profit in your own city, the other people in your city aren't going to listen to you. They, you have to be a prophet of another city that comes in and then educates those other people. And it's just that mindset that we just, we, we think we know everything. We're not going to listen to mom and dad, but if I have Brandon down the street and I see everything that he's doing, I might go listen to him, right? It, it's kind of messed up how we think that way, but that is kind of yeah. what I was thinking. I personally went through that. And so honestly, and now I actually sitting here thinking about it too. Number one, it, it was with going out, buying my first apartment, buying my groceries, the car insurance, the gasoline just in my car, right? It was a lot. Yeah. I actually had some times, I had a boyfriend at that time, I had to go to him and say, hey, I need a little bit of help with rent this month. Can you help me? And then on top of that, even being at Cracker Barrel, seeing these waitresses, Honestly, over half of them, it's actually kind of two different groups. You got folks who are around my age, teenage or early 20s, but then you have your lifelong uh, waitresses there. And I'm thinking to myself, oh my gosh, I don't know if I want to be at Cracker Barrel for the rest of my <laughs> life serving uh, a grandma's pancake breakfast, right? So, so it's really having those real world experiences that makes me come back around and think to myself, all right, dad, when you did tell me that money is not everything thing, but it's pretty close up there next to oxygen. It's making sense now. I don't think you're just an a 
a-hole anymore. Pardon my French. <laughs> yeah. So, so did you come in there? Like, I mean, you, you, you guys have Thanksgiving dinners that that's what's happening coming in a couple of days. Right. So, um, did you, you know, he, he's had those conversations with the wheel, with the, uh, car going a hundred miles an hour, you guys in the backyard are in the, the back seat. I'm talking about infinite banking. Um, right. Not, not probably not really happening, but, uh, how did you then come back to him and say, Hey, I really want to learn. Uh, and what was your, what was his posture and your posture as you kind of came back as a, as a, uh, now an adult in the, in the system? Yeah. Yeah. I would say so. So no, absolutely. You got to start the conversation. The, and, and that's just anything in life, in my opinion, not even just our monetary life, but even just in personal relationships, your health even. So, so you just have to start the conversation. So here's one thing pops would do because, you know, uh, we, we had a lake house. And so summers we'd go out there to the lake and we'd go boating and we'd ride on the jet skis. And so he would sit down with us. And actually what mom and dad do is they have a big poster board. And on their big poster board each and every month, they'll update it. They'll say, all right, this is our income. This is was our expenses this month. This right here, uh, this is the investments that I'm doing. This is the money that's coming in from those different investments. So, hey, y'all, look at this. For the family, mom and dad just bought two new wave runners for the lake house. However, we didn't do this just from, uh, we, we, we actually had to budget for this. We had to go out and work for this. Mm. So I want to show you how we went out and we bought these two wave runners. And they would show us from either their active income that's coming in or either their passive income. And then they taught us, you know, those different terminologies. What is passive income? What is interest even? What is budgeting? Yeah. Right. And it just starts the conversation. It kind of grows from a tree from there. So, so it sounds like he was intentional on having those definitions and words there. What, what do you, how would you help somebody if they say, well, I'm no Brent Kessler. I'm not in the financial services world. Um, I don't even understand it myself. How can I teach my kids about it? Yes. Yes. Here's what I would say. Because honestly, th these these words are very, they're big words. We don't even have to use those big words, right? So so for instance, I, what I would say is, is that I would go out, number one, definitely educate yourself, right? You have to go out and you want to better yourself in your life. So go out there, do the research. It's okay to turn off The Bachelor for Tuesday night and to go out and spend an hour, hour and a half watching some videos to further your knowledge or reading some books. So, so in my opinion, I would take it all back down to just simple savings, right? So, so here's how I introduce the, this infinite banking concept to folks who are around my age, even younger than myself. Your policy is nothing more than your glorified savings account, right? So all we're going to do is each and every month, you're going to pay yourself $100 a month into your savings account. That's what you're doing. So now all we're going to do is take that 100 a month. We're going to your, your conventional savings account down at the local bank. We're just going to take that 100 a month. And now your policy is going to be your savings account. And, and here's one big reason as to why, you know, why do we want to keep the money inside of the policy? Well, hey, you're in total control of that money. So, so where I would kind of start is maybe like in control and in control kind of ties into, you, you know, teaching folks about, um, and this might be uh, a big, but, but right. So you, Brandon, you and I get this economic value mm -hmm. added, right? All that means is, is that our money, we need to treat our money like it has a cost per capita. So if we go down and I'm doing the same thing, cause you can do the same thing in your regular savings account. If I go down and I go and put my money into my savings account, and then let's say I have a son and his name is Jimmy and Jimmy wants to go buy a video 
video game. So what Jimmy will do is he'll take out his allowance money that he was saving, let's call it $50, and go pay for that um, new video game. Well, then the learning just stops there. Parents don't educate their child to keep going back in, maybe replenish that money that they took out for that transaction, right? Keep putting and capitalizing into your savings. We're doing the same thing, but just over here in the policy. So if I take out $50 to go buy my video game, I'm going to pay myself back that $50 plus a little bit of interest because I know there's going to be a new game that's coming out here in four months that I want to go buy, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think about my my son who's four and just thinking again about these uh, systems that that we have or how to how to teach them and educate knowing you know um, I'm gonna be like Brent right in a few years uh, where he's probably gonna say oh you don't know what you're talking about but but he's learning little principles like he has his little banks that's the save right then there's spend and there's give right and he, so he has these three little banks and then he's learning little little money tricks, right? Mm -hmm. um, one of them was going, he went to a store, we went to a store and he learned how to negotiate, right? That was just a powerful mm -hmm. thing that he learned from us just, just talking. And I'm like, that's wow, that's, that, that's amazing for a four-year-old learning negotiating skills like he did. But um, those kind of things are, are really important and it starts um, with us implementing it ourselves right um so you know that your dad apparently uh was doing this and doing it publicly it seemed he wasn't just hiding it but he said hey kids this is what we're doing how do you um what do you talk to, as you talk to people how do you help them to maybe talk it out publicly with their kids or or 18 17 year old kids how do they do you help them with that or is there any kind of yeah. ideas there? Well, well, I think one thing that folks lack is, is that they don't understand where they're at right now as well. And so that's where you got to start. One of the questions that I always ask my folks when I'm on strategy calls and talking with them is I say, okay, what drew you to this concept? What is going on right now? Do you have bad debts that you're trying to get out of? Are you in that financial bind to those other people? Or no, Hannah, I'm just looking to diversify. I want to put uh, some of my wealth here. I just want to expand my portfolio. Or, or no, Hannah, I'm actively investing with my money right now. And I thought this would be a good tool to invest through and with my money in. So I would say it starts where, with what is going on right now. Because if you know what's going on, you are going to know what to do. So, so if you, as mom and dad sit down and like I said I, I even use a big poster board I love taking things to to pen and pad and just writing things down I know my, my folks love excel spreadsheets and stuff like that but you have to know what's going on because if you don't you're going to get all wacky and things are going to get out of control so so understand what's going on where's the money coming in how it's flowing how it's spending within your family budget and then from there talk with the children Children about what's going on. I, th that's honestly where I would personally start in, in, in this whole equation. I think I remembered your question, but it kind of it kind of left my mind as I was talking. Brandon, did I answer that? <laughs> I think so. Well, and, and I think that that's um, where I, I find it interesting, knowing what's going on in your finances. Um, a lot of times, reasons divorce happens, and and all of this is uh, it's they they don't know where it's going. They, they, mm -hmm. they don't know budgeting. And they said, where'd the money all go? Um, uh, well, um, it may have went to McDonald's or, you know, all of this. And um, it, for us, it's that needs versus wants, you know, teaching the kid, yeah, I want McDonald's. So, you know, I don't know if that's the best, you know, sometimes we'll do it, but um, most of the time not. But he knows kind of what our values are as a family. Uh, yeah. and we've talked out those values and we are very clear with our method and framework of giving our dollar jobs, giving our dollar, uh, 
where it needs to work. And that's why the policies make total sense. So one of the things I've also found that's interesting is when I work with older people, I, older is, is, is what do you call it? Relative, uh, because it doesn't really matter. Whenever I, I, I work with a, a 45 year old, they're like, I wish I would have started younger. And when mm -hmm. I work with a 65 year old, they say, I wish I would have started when I was 45. And then the young person thinks they know it all. So they don't start. Yeah. Um, how do you uh, bridge that gap where the old person, older, not old person, older person says, I wish I would have started this earlier. I mean, you probably hear this hands down yourself. Mm -hmm. I wish mm -hmm. I would have. How do you help them get started and, and build their good foundation and also uh, put it into a place where they can educate their children to get started and build when they have age on their side? Yes. Yes. Actually, it's so funny. R right before we got on this broadcast, I was on a strategy call. She's 72 years old, starting her banking system, her first banking policy. She said the same thing to me, Hannah, I I if I knew this 20, 30 years ago, I would be in a total financial position I would be in than what I am in today. And, and, and I said, um, I'm going to use a made up name. I'm going to say, um, well, Miss Mary Lou, for every dollar, if I had a dollar for every time I heard that, I wouldn't be teaching this anymore. I'd be on, on the beach uh, drinking margaritas all day uh, long, yeah. <laughs> right? right? So so it's really bringing them back, though, to the whole why, okay? Because I mm. know the best thing about these policies is the time value factor of them, right? I hate to tell you this, Brandon, but, but my policies that I started six years ago, they're going to be so but much better than the ones that you started five years ago, just because I have one more extra year of compounding, right? Again, just made up yep. numbers. But but that's what you really got to take them back to. And that's why they're honed in on it is because they're, they're thinking to themselves, oh, my gosh, I don't have all of this time left. But let's go back to a Rick Warren quote. Rick Warren tells us life is like a marathon. It doesn't matter how you start. It only matters how you finish. This is the game of life. Because the whole idea of these banking policies is, number one, the control factor. But then, number two, yeah. the opportunity cost of our money. When my my money hits the policy first. Now for the rest of my life, I'm going to earn an uninterrupted guaranteed compounding interest. So if I can just start that today, I'd rather just have one year of uninterrupted compounding than zero years at all, you know, right. and, then, and then to answer your other question about bringing it down to the streamline, because I did talk about that. I said, hey, well, the best thing that you can do now is take this information back to your family and back to your hairs, because now they can start this stuff. And this is where the, the financial literacy and the legacy of the family comes from, because, hey, Hey, uh, uh, Miss Mary Lou, when you pass, die, or graduate, look right here. You have this permanent death benefit that's guaranteed that your family is going to come into into some windfall. And if your family doesn't know how to properly manage that windfall of money, it's going to be gone. There Now it's done. There's no more financial liter uh, legacy that's being left to your families anymore. Yeah, I, I think that's too of looking like I, I'm a caretaker of my uh, uh, mother-in-law. Uh, she has a policy uh, on hers, on her life, and it's uh, a single premium policy that we set up for her. Uh, and we, we have it as uh, in case she gets sick fund, basically, is, is what it is. It's an emergency fund, but it's also set up for... Uh, I mean, it's going to be a good death benefit maybe for us, right? But maybe, I don't know what's going to happen for her. But she is also, uh, as we've been kind of in the middle, building these policies, she wants to save for her grandson. She wants to contribute college and do all that stuff. And so she was like, I need to put money into, you know, 529 plan or whatever. I said, well, how about we do this? And she puts in a hundred bucks a month into the policy for uh, for my son, and we call it his adulting fund, right? And so I, I have the uh, 
uh, my mother-in-law supporting uh, my son and my mother-in-law is 73, I think years old. Right. So she's not going to be around for a long time. Right. But I'm just thinking generationally and, you know, still, again, I have a five-year-old, but how or a four and a half year old, but how do I help position him to take on this? Right. And so uh, not just being trust fund babies, but, um, as you've been dealing in this and, and this legacy of thinking, um, how has it helped you? And, and you're now like learning a ton, right? That you've learned from, from this wealth of wisdom, right? Uh, literally mm -hmm. our podcast is wealth wisdom, right? But how then are you teaching it to whatever your generation now and how, are, what's the, what's the, pushback that you're seeing with uh probably the same but but people in your uh uh group age group yeah yeah so i, I would say um and actually there, there was one thing or earlier when you were talking as well so something else that my mom has always taught me on is is that she visualizes uh her dollars as little green men so you can even give that visual to your little uh, uh, children out there, right? Because they love those visuals and, and learning about that. And um, so, so anyways, how I view my money is my little green men and how we've been so conditioned to think. And I think it's just easier for me because I am young. Yeah. I didn't have to go and unlearn all of the other stuff that y'all have been brought up on and taught from your parents and, and grandparents and so on. So so I, I, I don't have to go back and unlearn all of that stuff. So it's easier for me to visualize my money more as a tool instead of hoarding it in that scarcity mindset. Be because I've, I've actually noticed this more and more here in my recent life, like within the past like six months or so, that if you really truly treat your dollars with respect, you, you go out and you treat your money with that that, hey, my money has a cost to it. If I go and buy this item, I should have a plan to save back up and pay myself back for it. And when I do that, I've noticed that the, the money and the wealth is really, truly abundant. It, money flows and grows to where it's respected, in my opinion. And if you can truly understand and grasp that concept, you're going to be so much farther ahead. Because, right, isn't one of the things that Nelson Nash teaches us that what you are doing in the economy is compared to what everybody else is doing. So if I, if I can just do one small, simple step that changes me and separates me from the other folks out there, I'm going to be so much farther ahead. So, so it's kind of just yep. getting them around that. But I will say my generation, we suck at the microwave mentality. Okay. All of us want our money right now, now, now. I don't want to wait. I want to go to McDonald's and have my, my food back in my hand within a minute and 30 seconds, right? So, yeah. so that is one of the hardest challenges that I have come into, and I'm still dealing with it. And I'm, and I'm still actively trying to go in and, and find a way to really get us out of this mindset. But I do go in and, and I really go back to Nelson's teaching of right rule number three, think long term, or maybe it's rule number one. Anyways, I have my own order, but think long range, right? Because if you don't, I, I mean, you're just planning for the right here, right now. And a lot of us saw that during the COVID era, right? When COVID yep. hit yep. and we were out of work for a few months, a year, maybe over a year, we didn't have that cash reserve to plan for these uncertain times in life. So we have to plan for those unseen times. And, and then on top of that, you know, I'll talk to them about like taxes, right? Uh, one thing our public school education sucks at doing is teaching us about taxes, even just filling out a 1099 or a W-2 form. How do I even do that? I had to go to mom and dad and ask for help on that. <laughs> oh, I, my, my son uh, understands taxes. Uh, at least a little bit, because um, anytime, you know, there's a treat and uh, and I have to open up his treat bag like a cookie or something. It's like, well, there's going to be a tax on it. And uh, <laughs> and he he is like against taxes all the way in. And he's told me many times, 
no taxes, open this, but please no taxes. Um, <laughs> you know, and, and he's said that a lot. And I was like, Oh yeah, there you go. Uh, mm -hmm. so he's learning, um, you know, somewhat of, of the tax world. Um, That's cool. I like that. Yeah. Uh, I get, I mean, I like it too. Cause I get a little bit of, uh, his treat. Yes. And, and or even like this, for instance, like I was just talking with a mother. And so uh, th their uh, her child will get his weekly allowance from doing the chores. And so he will go to uh, let, let's say they're at uh, Dick Sporting Goods or Academy or whatever. And he wants that new uh, item. And so he'll look at it and he'll say he, he'll say, Mom, I really want this. And, and so mom will turn to him and say, well, is that worth three weeks of, of your chores that you're doing? And then it gets them into that mindset of showing them that there is a cost to that item and the work that you put in, this is the item that you want to buy. So then he'll think to himself, okay, is that toy really worth that three weeks of chores? I got to think about this now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I, I've thought a little bit on uh, the tithe model. So tithing to our church, you know, just that 10% goes away uh, to your local church, but then reversing it and saying 10% of all your own is for you to keep, right? So uh, as a young person, though, we think that, oh, retirement is so far off. Uh, mm -hmm. Saving for that is is like way uh, far away. Uh, now you're, uh, I think, 23, right? That's um, right. Now, when do you think is the best time to start saving for quote unquote retirement or future you? Yeah, I, I say day one, day one immediately. And, and me personally, and now th this is just my humble opinion, what I'm doing, it's my policies. My policies are my retirement plan. I don't have any 401ks, IRAs, pensions or whatnot, right? I don't have any of that stuff. My policies are truly, really my retirement income. And then on top of that, you know, yes, I like to go out in the investment world. So I want to rack up maybe some investments that will also produce me long-term passive income. But, but that's really what it is. And I say today because a dollar is always worth more today than what it is in the yep. future. I'd still talk to people who are 55 years old, don't even have a retirement plan. They're just working and working and working and spending, spending, spending. You, you got to, you got to save because I, I trust me, you don't want to be working at the doorman at Walmart at, at 82 years old. I mean, maybe you do for the fun of it, but not just to support your livelihood. Right. Yeah. I think that's, again, reverse engineering. Uh, one of my friends, he says, what will you do when you're 82 um, is, is one of his like little taglines. And we often think that our 82-year-old self is a different person, right? Or, you know, uh, our four-year-old self was a different person. Maybe we were, right? But we're still the same person. And those things that I did when I was 20, I just think – Oh my gosh, imagine the compounding if I would have known about this concept when I was there and teachable to do something about it. Uh, mm -hmm. That's that's the hard part. So how do you then help people switch from a now mindset? Uh, I want to get through traffic now, like now instead of just waiting um, to a uh, def delayed gratification what do you yes. what do you do for yourself or for others? Yes, I, I say I say it starts with the vision. Here's one thing my mentor ha has taught me. He, he says he says, Hannah, I want you to picture your, your perfect life. I want to picture I want you to tell me your perfect day. And so and so you sit there and you think about your most perfect day. Then from there, just like just like how we're talking about reverse engineering. How do I get to my most perfect day? And, and on top of that, actually, my most perfect day, actually, it still includes taking strategy calls. I love talking to y'all. I love talking about this concept. But can I be real? I don't want to talk on the phone from 9, 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. every single day, right? But yeah, I love right. to talk 
from time to time, but then maybe on an afternoon, I want to go take my paddleboard out. I want to go to yoga class or do something, right? So, so it's really structuring your most perfect day. How do you see your life? And then from there, how can I build my financial life and my daily life revolving around this to work up to the goal of my true perfect vision that I see for myself? Because I mean, isn't that the whole reason of why we live this life here on this earth? Not, not to get right. so philosophical, Fickle. There we go here for a second. But but right. Aren't we doing that? Because I want to live every single day the way I want to live it, not on anybody else's terms. So I, I think it's really starting from that perfect vision of what you see your perfect day life every single day. Yeah. Well, and guys, as you're in here, um, put in the chat if you have questions. I see a couple on LinkedIn. I'm not sure if I see anything on Facebook or anything. But um, I would love to hear what you guys think about uh, this or questions you have about how we've maybe reverse engineered it. Uh, again, as I talk to people, uh, married couples, um, you know, they're kind of what, what I say a lot of times is they're haphazard in their financial lives and, and lives in general. Uh, and so they're, they're running around like crazy, chaotic. Uh, and, and they wonder why their kids, um, are in the same same position. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm like, well, uh, it's better, um, caught than taught is one of my, uh, mentors. He said that, um, right. So it's better caught than taught, right? So you're, you probably caught a lot of things a lot from your dad that came back later that you were, when you were 15, he said things and you're like, oh, wait. And now it's clicking at different times in your life. Um, mm-hmm. How, how, and, and I don't know if you're going to have kids or anything in the future, but I'm sure you're thinking about like the legacy of, of that, my intentions of what I do. Um, but, but how do you help people go from this uh, chaotic kind of financial life to a intentional uh, finances? Good, good. No, that's a good question. I would say, I would say what would bring boiling down to what's really important to them, right? If, if maybe my importance is, is that I, I, it's really not my life right now. It's honestly my children and and my grandchildren Mm -hmm. that I'm for that's where I want to hone a lot of my resources, my time and my energy spent on. Um, maybe it is that hey, I'm starting a new business and and I just need to be financially sound with this business adventure and investment that I'm doing right now. I think it really just has to boil down to you got to come back to your reasons as to why and that importance that matters to you. And then from there, if you just keep bringing them back to that full why all the chaotic thoughts are going to disappear and go away. I mean, I even do it the same thing in my, um, in my own life. Um, I bet a lot of people deal with anxiety. I myself do. And so when I start getting those uh, crazy thoughts out there, I just bring it back into the whole reason of, all right, Hannah, let's come back to the foundation. Why are we doing this again? Let's take a little break and step back just for a second. I think, I think that would be my answer, but actually I kind of want to hear your answer. What's your answer to that? I mean, um, I, I think it, it's, I don't know, just nar- learning. And I have my wife that we kind of do this together. But in our intentionality, we have the still method that we do. And it's setting your sights, right? Uh, as a family, we have certain things that we put into place regularly that um, allows uh, habits, right? So every Sunday we have what we call, um, family fun day, uh, or family adventure day. Right. And so my son, four year old, you know, he's like, Oh yeah, we're going to go on a family adventure. What that means is, is it's not like expensive. It's usually just going to a, um, park or something, but it's doing adventures and being intentional about those things, right? And so uh, being intentional with him and it's it's just habits. Sometimes I think that people want to be uh, action, 
like they want things to be fresh all the time, right? Mm -hmm. Have new food or this. I eat the same thing almost every day, pretty much, mm -hmm. right? Um, pretty boring, but there's some big things that I know and I, I've intended intentional on is uh, I want my son to visit six of the seven continents. The, the reason I want that is because then I have to go with them one uh, and visit those places. Uh, that's an amazing thing. And he's going to, when he's, when he's complaining his lattes are too foamy or something like that, I want to go to Africa and do some serving or something that's going to show that the world doesn't revolve around him. Mm -hmm. uh, he'll know we have plenty of, we do have plenty of money, but I don't need to buy four houses, right? Um, I don't need to spend all my money just because I have it. Yes. Um, intentional. Yeah, it's intentional. And for me, wealth is a ton more than money. Uh, we we want to think that wealth is just finances or or money will solve my problem. Uh, money doesn't always solve the problem. It might actually expound the problem, mm -hmm. right? Um, and and so what what I what I've been thinking a lot is how do I teach him that it's just a uh, means of what's in the heart. Right. And so there's so much more in that statement that I wish that we would teach money from the heart more so than just um, the head, maybe. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That, the head or accumulation or, or more, more, more greed. Um, yeah. But but being a person that is giving, uh, being a person that's understanding systems. Right. Understanding when money is going out of your hands. Um, you know, I think about, and I tell my, my son, you know, and again, he's four year old, right? If you hold your hands like this and you have money in your hand, more money can come out easy. So the, how do we, cl we close our fingers, right? And we can hold more. Um, but anyway, that's just a, an example that a four year old, yeah. yeah, a, a four year old can kind of grab and understand, mm -hmm. um, when we're doing infinite banking, all we're teaching somebody to do is close their fingers and hold more of their, their funds. Yes. Yes. I agree. I like that. I was even thinking like sometime here soon, somebody's got to make a child's book around IBC. That'd be kind of fun, right? Yeah. I, I think there's a few that I've, I've seen or, oh. or I don't know, the Tuttle, Tuttle twins or something like that. I don't remember. Um, okay. But um uh, they're, they're interesting books that I, I've been learning and reading. Uh, but, but again, sometimes it's all m more market driven and not about the other side, or, you know, partially because a lot is misinformed about infinite banking because of the, the wall street world. So uh, as you've been, you know, dealing with that and I guess seeing this, you have your, your adults, um, older people finally get it. And then the kids, they, they send you their kids. Have you had, had that where you get the kids? And then you have the conversations. How have some of those conversations gone both good and bad that you're like, oh my gosh, I'm having this conversation again. Uh, and they don't want to learn yep. or they do want to learn. Where have you seen those things? And what would you advise to parents? Yeah, no, I, I would say kind of going back to that quote, you can't be a prophet in your own town, you know? So, so I, I always say, I say, Hey, let me, or, or actually I even get this one a lot too, you know, where people come to me and they'll say, Hannah, I was talking about this with my husband or my mom and I was explaining it to them, but I just, I don't think I'm doing a good job at explaining it to them. So, so I always just say, well, Hey, let's have an open conversation, bring everybody to the table. I even highly suggest that whether it be children to parents or, or spouses together, bring everybody into the conversation so that everybody's on the same page in the same book here. Right. Right. So um, I, I will say with um, I, I will say, though, kids pick this up a lot quicker. 
I will say as well um, um, that there are parents out there that do pick up, pick this up quicker. Just maybe uh, how their mindset is already around money. Uh, um, maybe mm-hmm. they're, they're an entrepreneur instead of a, a W-2 person, right? But um I, I, I would say it's just really just getting back down to, I, I think, honestly, I think my answer is getting back down to the foundation of it all and just really coming back to the why behind it. Because honestly, there's no there's no magic behind this infinite banking concept. And, and personally, it's not all uh, rainbows and unicorns and everything like that. Hey, here's the facts of what's going on. You take action with those facts if you want to or not, or you can still be a customer of the Fed and the central banks for the rest of your life. You choose. I don't care what you do because I know my wealth train is is going to keep moving this way. And so you can hop on the, the train. It, it, we're at the station right, right now. So I don't know. I, I, I think it's just coming back and just going into that conversation with them and then obviously too you know bringing it down to where they're at as well you know we, we don't have to talk big big names and terms and numbers like this like like I, I'm gonna t- teach a Jimmy here how to buy and finance his video games through his policy let's start there you know what are you already yeah. doing and then let's build on how IBC fits into that equation of what you're already doing. Yeah. And, and again, I think like setting your kids up for success, like my grand, my mother-in-law is already setting him up for success within his, um, within his policy. And Mm I, I'm like, man, he has more money there than some adults have uh, actually. Um, and that, that's pretty awesome. Um, Right. And, and just the educational piece of it. Um, and you said, Hey, I'm going on this train. Uh, I know how this train will end for me. If you want to join, that's great. Um, yeah. And I think that that's huge. I also think it's bringing into the community too. Cause, cause let's be real there. When you go out and talk about infinite banking, a lot of folks that they'll turn you off, right? They 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 said, nope, that can't be done. You're you're doing something crazy over there. Um, that that just can't be done. So I think it's really being within that community, so you don't feel like a lone ranger out there on your own solo island. I feel like that's where a lot of people get cut mm-hmm. off to this infinite banking concept, is because they don't have that community and support behind them saying, hey, no, we're here right here with you. What questions do you have? How can I help you? Right. Well, and again, I think some of it is the system has been in place to keep us uh, maybe disorganized about it, uh, mm-hmm. you know, within on the Wall Street side of things and, and just the banking side. Like, why would they want us to understand and learn how money works mm-hmm. when there's so much money to be made in the confusion, mm-hmm. right? Um, and so if I can teach my children or young people how the system works and almost like the matrix, if I can help them to figure out how to unplug from certain things to learn what's really going on, that, that could change the world. Um, and there's people that don't want us to know that. Right. Mm -hmm. Uh, And then there's also what I would call uh, a lot of false prophets out there, people who are saying they do this, but it's not uh, the um, not the the way of the the Jedi uh, Nelson Nash would do. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, if if I'm going to use Star Wars analogies or something. um, (laughs) Right. So, so I just think about like, there's a lot of that out there and I've heard people say, oh yeah, I, I, I mean like just recently, oh yeah, I've, I've read those books and I decided to get a license and do it myself. And I have this, uh, IUL policy that I designed just like this. And, and I'm like, um, no, you, you, you didn't. Um, so, oh, Ronald Millsap, uh, he's a banker. Uh, he asked, what is infinite banking? We have a, we have a joke here uh, at the Money Multiplier. When someone asks, I would say, I don't know. Do you know, Brandon? Do you know? Because I don't know. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Yeah. We're just pulling your leg. Uh, do you want to take on that one? You, you, how, how would you answer that question? 
Yeah, so uh, Ronald, uh, thanks for joining. What it is and what I've found is that it is a properly designed whole life insurance policy that you can use almost as uh, access to cash. I use that as I uh, do my stuff in my business. So Ronald used to, I think he's in Chicago. Um, the Ronald, I used to own a coffee shop that you've been in. Well, I needed to save for my future. Well, I also had credit cards to start the business. What I did was I used my cash value to pay off some of those cards. Instead of it going to the banks, it went back into my pocket and I started paying myself back instead. And uh, there's an arbitrage between the interest rate on the credit card, 18% versus 5% on the policy. So I was able to use the the infinite banking policy, the whole life properly designed policy to grow my wealth. And then I then turned around and used those same policies to buy uh, my uh, office con or not my office condo, my home. Right. Uh, and I was able to put 20% down and work in conjunction with the bank to get good rates at the time. Right. So I'm using infinite banking to do uh, building my wealth. So hopefully that helps. But it's in essence uh, properly designed whole life insurance that is mutually owned companies, non direct recognition that we can use uh, for other things. And the, the, it's what the Rockefellers have done, it's what a lot of big wealthy families do. So we just figured, hey, if, if the Rockefellers can teach this and they can create this, how can we do this on a smaller level? Like I'm no Rockefeller yet, but um, maybe because of the things I'm doing, it's going to affect my son in a powerful way. Family banking. Yeah. So that's uh, in essence, what, what would you add there uh, to this, Hannah? I would, I would say if I had like a, a five second overview, the infinite banking concept is about taking back the control of the banking function in your life. Stop leaving that control up to the banks, the Fed, the central government, right? So, so you start taking back that control and how we do so is through these specifically engineered whole life policies. I mean, if I could do the same thing with my glass of water here, I'd be hooting and hollering and telling you how cool these glasses of waters are with, with uh, keeping control and taking back uh, uh, that, that money and keeping the money in my family. So th that's all we're doing. And yeah. read the book, Becoming Your Own Banker, R. Nelson Nash. That's what I call the Bible of infinite banking. Yeah, I have a copy in the other room. Uh, I was just looking at it. We, we are releasing a video, What is Infinite Banking uh, and Banking Yourself? Uh, it'll be released in two weeks. So um that's another video that's coming out. And of course, you can see uh, everything at Money Multiplier. They have a whole lot of videos on that. Um, but in essence, this is the thing I want to see changed. Like we have one planet to live on, right? We have yeah. one planet that I feel like is, is getting divisive. There's all kinds of crazy stuff. And I, I worry sometimes I'm like, all right, man, this is I feel like I'm the old man. That's saying in my day it was it was nice now it's you know uh, getting worse and worse and and uh, but I'm like okay I want to give my son a better brighter future uh, and I know you guys want to give your heirs and people around you whether they're adult kids or uh, young kids like mine you want to give them a better position too um, so. You know, and I, that's why I had Hannah on here because I think she's going to be around in the space for a long time. Um, and yeah, oh, this is, he said, uh, thanks for sharing. Glad to see you doing well. Pleasure to meet you, Hannah. Hey, Ronald, reach out to me. I, I do want to hear how things are going there in the Chicago area. Uh, love to hear. Um, oh, so you know Ronald from your coffee shop days. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, from what I remember, I believe Ronald is in 
the banking industry. Uh, <laughs> so I'm pretty sure I forget which bank he's in, uh, but I'm pretty sure he's in the uh, south side of Chicago. Um, we met uh, when I was starting a chamber of commerce with my wife. So, um, yeah, any other questions? If you guys have questions, put them in there. We'll end in a, just a few minutes, but I see we have several people on. I really love that we can have this kind of interaction. Um, and really, the whole point is I want to help people break through to a smart, stable financial future. And the work that we do, personally, I know, is going to reach well beyond what I even can fathom because it yeah. is in essence, it's life insurance, right? I mean, it is life insurance. Um, there's going to be a, it, the contract will be made whole at some point. It will be completed. Uh, and my son is going to get some amazing rewards from it. I know. Uh, yeah, I think you're going to get some amazing. Uh, how many policies does your dad have? Yeah, actually, he's uh, about to fund next week. He's funding three more, one on my um, sister-in-law and then uh, on my niece and nephew or his grandchildren. And um, so I think that would bring him up to 27. 24 plus three is 27, right? Yep. <laughs> and, and how many does he have on himself and his wife? Oh. So he... I don't I don't know the the amount like like the the actual policies I want to say maybe anywhere from six I want to say maybe six on both of them yeah yeah I, I, I'm getting there companies yeah I I think that that's the powerful thing uh, as we teach this concept we don't just tell you uh, what is happening or or what you should do this is this is the thing i love about hannah and myself is we do the uh, the thing that we tell people to do uh never trust somebody who says do this but they don't do it right um i think that that's a a, a challenge but really it's about okay what are you doing with your money how are you doing it and that's uh, the more powerful thing. And I believe in the system. So, well, thanks Hannah for being here. Uh, any closing remarks you'd like to leave, uh, as we end today? Yeah, no, I think that was perfect. I think that was a perfect closing statement. Just, just do your research, go out there, do your research, uh, think for yourself in question is another quote I kind of live by, you know, so, so just don't take everything at face value. Keep going out there, asking the questions until it really, truly understands to you and you find your, your path line, right? You not, there's no silver bullet in my opinion out there for everybody. But in my opinion, if you stand in front of a mirror and when you breathe and you fog up that glass. I think you should be practicing the infinite banking concept, just my humble opinion. But um, no, I think that was good. And keep, keep following Wealth Wisdom. They, they got a good, lot of good stuff going on. Awesome. Well, thanks guys for being here. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring that bell for great videos. Uh, we are doing more and more of this stuff. Uh, and of course, go to their channel, uh, they have a Money Multiplier podcast episode, uh, as well as, I don't know, you're on all kinds of stuff. I think there's an infinite banking group. Um, so uh, join them there. And uh, again, Hannah, thanks for being here. And we, get, we will see you guys next time. I don't know when we're going to show up, but have a good Thanksgiving. And we'll see you uh, there. Don't forget to talk about infinite banking around the turkey table. Yeah. Thanks, Brandon.